It's Luna Luna. I've been there in 1987. Uh, it was uh, in Hamburg. It was on a lawn in a park, if I remember it well. Um, I went there without really knowing what I was expecting. I wasn't an artist at this point in 87. I was a scientist. I was doing my PhD. And then I came to this park and I thought, wow, this is what art can be. This is, you know, it's, it's much more than showing objects in spaces uh, created for showing art. So it was a completely different experience. And even though I thought that some of the whites were like not so, let's say, entertaining in a bodily sense as they are in a real amusement park, they were also much better in the sense that you can you could be part of the artwork. You could go there and sit, for instance, in, in Jean-Michel Basquiat's uh, <clears throat> Ferris wheel, which I did, and sit in his, in his work and be turned around. So I'm, I'm sure this influenced me a lot. I learned when I saw this, you can create uh, like an environment or a situation, if you want to call it like this, where people can be together who don't necessarily need to see or experience this, but is there in the same way. They can be very different. They can be children. They can be, uh, you know, people who have a big cultural background. They can be people from some from different parts of the world. That's very powerful. I had done what I could do as a scientist, and I wanted to become an artist because I always had two hearts in my soul. Personally, I had so often the experience that people standing next to me are part of the experience. I can't just think them away. So I thought it would be interesting to do artworks that contain other people that are there. So my slides, for instance, that I've been doing many times, uh, these slides are as much a sculpture as they're also a way of looking at other people. Because the people who come down the slide, they have a very specific expression in their face. So if you think about that, I work with people's expression in their faces. And in this case here at the Double Club, what we're doing is we're creating like a whole landscape. So it's not just uh, something you can use or see other people using it. It's also a big environment, so there's no end to it. It's, it's becoming like a model world. I quite like the idea of doing something that you can't really do somewhere outside in society. So you're creating like, uh, you know, like a, a, a a model situation where a different set of rules apply. And here in this case, it's, you know, we're creating a music venue, but this music venue is also containing real uh, amusement park rides, and it is based on a very simple mathematical division principle. So these three main factors, I think they will interact in a way that uh, could be quite interesting. The collaboration with Prades mm. started in 99, or when we started to work on the exhibition at Fondazione Prada, which for me was a big thing, also because uh, I had the possibility to do works in a scale which I haven't really done before. So for instance, my upside down mushroom room is a result of this uh, exhibition in 2000, then it was. And <clears throat> from there on we continued, so we, we, um, we had the double club in London, which was uh, a restaurant, a bar and a discotheque which was half Congolese and half Western culture, but not, uh, no fusion. Everything kept apart, both in, in space, but also in time, in terms of music. And then in Miami, uh, another double club, which was uh, a monochromatic space, a space without any color, where even the bottles in the bar and everything was black and white or in different gray tones. And even the people who worked there, we painted their face in uh, uh, face paint. They had sunglasses on, they were not allowed to open the mouth, so we couldn't see inside. And then, so it was a black and white space. You come in and you, you think, you know, like you're in a black and white film, everything feels wrong. And then uh, next to it, a very colorful outdoor space and the same feeling again. I don't really fit in here because I'm, I'm you know, too pale as compared to all that surrounds me. So it's about creating some kind of tension between two extremes and about uh, forgetting the middle ground that we're normally in because that's our comfort zone. But if you go to the extremes, uh, if it would be like linear on the right and on the left, then and you take the middle part away, you create a very interesting situation. Many of my works have like a 
two-sidedness to it. So it's, it's a certain duality. You have two elements that come from the same place and then you cut them in half and put them together again. And then you make, you make a new unity out of it. So this is a, basically it's a collage. It's a very old artistic technique. You take things and you glue them together. So the double club is something like this. You take elements and you glue them together in a new way and you create a big image from the different parts. Uh, and so, but there's no recipe for it. There's no rule in the sense that it has to be two different cultural entities, as in London, or it has to be uh, black and white versus color, or <clears throat> like in Miami, or that it has to be a division and then a division of a division, and then a division of a division of a division, and so on, as here in Los Angeles. It's about, you know, separating things and putting them together again. The double clubs are all uh, contain an element of music uh, because it has a very transformative power. It makes people feel in a special way and especially, you know, interact with each other, dance, whatever they do. I'm, I'm very fond of uh, Congolese music. I'm very fond of West African music. So I've always been interested in creating environments that are good for containing this music and making you experience it. I don't think that the way how we listen to music has been explored properly. So these installations have to do with this idea that you explore the power of music and that you present it in the best possible way. We're here in the Luna Luna exhibition. This is the historical part, and now we're doing the contemporary part next door, where you can touch everything, we can drink, we can dance, we can listen to music, where it's going to be alive. So my experience from 1987, put in a contemporary context and possibly even, you know, turning it upside down. That's what we're doing next door at the Double Club.